Denver's old. Well, at least for the West, Denver is old. Uh, founded in November of 1858, and Whittier comes around not with that name, but with the subdivision plats that make up the neighborhood. That starts back in 1868. So the Whittier area is almost as old as the city itself. So for those first 50 years, the story of Whittier is the building up of Denver. It had so much culture here. You can think of Whittier as one of the first early suburbs of the city. It was first settled by the Italians and the Jewish people and the German people. And so it just is a flow of populations based on economics, job opportunity. Very uh, working class and middle class area of the city. Uh, shopkeepers and doctors, lawyers, all kinds of people living there. And they open a new elementary school to uh, deal with all the new children in Whittier and that opens in 1883 and they name the school for um, abolitionist John Greenleaf Whittier. What really starts happening in the early 20th century with Whittier is also very interesting and really uh, has a great effect on the neighborhood itself and that is the growing black population in Denver. That black citizenry is growing and they're really concentrating in the Five Points neighborhood and that Five Points story is really well known in Denver. That becomes a center of a segregated city within Denver. So really we often combine Five Points and Whittier because they have very similar histories. Five Points has a little bit more of a combination of business and residential, where Whittier for the most of its history is primarily a residential neighborhood. You know, I can't really say that I remember much difference in the Five Points of Whittier neighborhood. To me, the only thing that was different was the angle of the streets, but my classmates lived on either side of Downing Street growing up. Many of the resources and everything flowed off of Five Points. So many of the people, the doctors, the lawyers, the prominent people as well as the everyday folks, rented property over in the Whittier area. These Victorian homes built by the first uh, generations of Denverites there end up being bought by Denver's black citizens, but also by a growing immigrant community, such as my grandmother, who moved there in the 1930s. She was the ch a child, she and her brother, of Italian immigrants. They grew up out on the Eastern Plains, moved to Denver during the Depression, so they have a very immigrant story. We started expanding into the Whittier neighborhood, probably in the 1920s, with a lot of resistance and a lot of challenges and more families started moving into it continued to fill up the five points neighborhood and move into the Whittier neighborhood in the 30s and 40s my great grandfather was trying to build a house in Clayton Edition and he did have the house built but they didn't know they were building it for a black man and then when they when he went to collect the keys and take the house they wouldn't let him move in they burned a cross on his front lawn he had to move his family over on 32nd Street and then eventually he moved to 2538 Marion Street. They were the first black family on that block. And some of the other families that, that I grew up with, and they all have a little bit different story they can tell you about what their family experienced or where they lived. Especially after the 1920s and 1930s, uh, the, the black population of Whittier uh, explodes. As folks expanded, east into the Whittier neighborhood and other neighborhoods, redlining ran down 23rd Avenue all the way to the at least Quebec Street, if not further. This was the only place that African Americans could own property. So at some point, this was all black, black business, black, you know, all the homes were black homeowners. In my opinion, in my memory, it was really segregation, uh, as much segregation as there was in, in the South and you didn't want to go past Colfax. I mean, basically that was, uh, that was a white area on that side of Colfax. We didn't go outside those boundaries a lot at all. And everything that we needed was within those boundaries. And in fact, Whittier Elementary becomes the first majority black school in Denver by the 1930s. And so if you look at the photographs uh, of the school, it shows that changing demographic 
at Whittier and then later at Manual High School, which was in, is in the Whittier neighborhood as well. But this is all the Manual yearbooks. Manual High School started as Manual Training High School and taught a lot of vocational things. You see how Anglo it is now? And I get some more and you'll see different population. When I was at Manual, they had all of these different programs in place so you could learn about flying, flying aer aeronautics, and you could learn how to build a house. And you could learn how to be a, a mechanic, auto mechanic. Remember, Whittier is this new suburb, and they put this new idea of a school for the new suburb <laughs> out in, in Whittier. And it's, it's a manual, it's called the Manual Training High School. And it is this new idea that you're not only gonna go to school to learn you know, reading, writing, and arithmetic, but you're gonna learn all, learn all these physical skills. Um, and it was very innovative at the time. But you see, to even this date, they didn't have any African-American teachers, only one. But you see the differences in the population. I am a, a proud Thunderbolt that came out of Manual High School in 1967. So our schools were pretty much segregated, although it wasn't a, a um, formal segregation. But when I was there, it was wonderful. Not only that, we had great music programs. We had fairly, a really good basketball um, program. They won quite a few awards. It was, had a lot of black culture. You know, Motown was coming out and uh, people getting cars and um, going to parties at night. And it was more uh, enjoying ourselves as young adults and really didn't get into the issues about race and inequities. Uh, those kind of things didn't come until later on in my life. We talk about manual everywhere. <laughs> Even when I've lived in other cities, I have spoken about manual high school and the kind of dedication that the personnel that was there that helped the students not only develop as individuals, but as community people. Some of the people that graduated from Manual High School and what they've gone on to do, all the educators that have come out of there and musicians and artists and politicians, Wellington Webb and Wilma Webb. By 1990, the population has halved. 25% of the houses in Whittier are vacant. They, of course, took advantage of the open housing and many of them moved out of the area. And so that big, good size economic base was pretty much demolished. And that's why Park Hill becomes so, such a draw for Denver's black community, um, especially after World War II with those new houses. So they also leave Whittier. It was, uh... 1965, I think, or 66, we moved up to Park Hill. And at that time, people called it Struggle Hill. There was significant white flight when African Americans started to move into that area. It's changed considerably. And, and a lot of the changes for me have, have been heartbreaking. So we do see this kind of, um, this growth of the neighborhood and then a bit of a decline. Part of that decline is because of success in civil rights laws that allowed people to purchase and live in places that weren't in Five Points. And so, so a little bit, some of that, that is wonderful that our city became less restrictive, but it also led to a decline in terms of both population as well as businesses. After about 1990, with the, those empty houses, and especially after 2000, it leads to a lot of good deals in Whittier, where people uh, who are looking for maybe their first home come in and are able to afford these houses. That's how I moved back to Whittier when I was there in 1997 and then bought a house in 01, because that's what I could afford at the time. And this led to a huge influx of people moving in who were fixing up these old houses. So a lot of the housing, um, original housing, from that first chapter of Whittier's history, still in place. Uh, all the citizens over the 
different eras of the city's history really took good care of those homes. And it has now allowed Whittier to become Denver's most diverse area. My name is Meliti Brahana Mescal. I own Whittier Cafe. We've been here for almost six years. Um, we're an African espresso bar and uh, our focus is social justice. So we are one of a, a few black businesses left in this community. So it's um, a place that's, I think, revered. Um, it's not unusual to come here on any given Saturday and there are various um, organizers here, like community activists and um, people who are really trying to change and improve the world that we live in, but the city that we live in specifically. You may have heard the word gentrification. Whittier is now facing those gentrification issues. For example, I couldn't afford the house that I own now in Whittier on the salary I have because the price has gone out the roof. We are still struggling for equity and we're still struggling for everyone to have the benefit of being part of this community. My big thing is when you, when you move into a community, get to know people who are there, get to know their stories, um, talk to your neighbors, understand what people need, understand what the challenges are, and be a part of the community. Don't come in and take over a community. You know, and understanding the diversity of this neighborhood. So I feel we have a good opportunity at this point in time with the kinds of people who are involved and live in the area as well as those who once lived in the area who are coming back. Whittier proves that integration of, of uh, all citizens can, can work, right? Because younger generations, they're happy to live with a, in a multi-ethnic, multi-racial neighborhood. And I think that's real progress. What I love about this cafe, I think we attract a certain type of person. Um, and you'll see all types of people at, at, our, at our coffee shop. You know, the murals that are on the wall built by someone, in the, painted by someone in the community. The shelves where, with everything that we sell inside, built by someone who lives in this community. Um, we have a free lending library. People in the community bring their books. People in the community come and take books. So I just feel really blessed to be in this community at this time and have the support that we have. The key is the youth, you know, we need the youth in terms of their energy. And then if they can just kind of listen to the elders and take a little historical advice and mix all of that up together, I think we'll have a good pot. I'm, I'm very optimistic about what can be done. <laughs>